What is up, y'all? Welcome in. It is lovely to see you. I hope you guys are having a lovely night. It's nice to see everybody. How I want a I want to hear how how y'all's week weeks are going. Uh, but I'll I'll, ta I'll talk a little bit first because there's there's been some stuff going on that has been very exciting. Um, also, no worries, Mouse. Thank you. I appreciate the lurk. Um, but yeah, no stream on Sunday because we had uh, Virality, which was the online VR furry conference that I did over the weekend. Very fucking fun. Um, kind of a blast. Um, also had a lot of friends over this past week, which was fun. I got to see my buddy Adam. I got to see my buddy Zach, who I haven't, who I made friend like we became friends in third grade and then haven't talked to each other since like fifth grade. And so there's very cool to like sync up with him post college and shit. Um, that was rad. He's out in the middle of the forest right now. Um, and then also my friend, uh, Ben also stopped by. It was a lot of, a lot of like, uh, work, like hosting everybody, but honestly, very fun. Um, yeah, but definitely like very, like very full week, which was fun. Hence why we took yesterday, not yesterday, last stream, Sunday off. Yep. Re reminder to hydrate. SFB. Hey, Anna's welcome in. Uh, meow. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, I hope you guys are having a lovely one. Um, tonight we're going to be playing Sable, which I've been looking forward to. It is a exploration game. I've heard people compare it to Breath of the Wild, but my guess is that's just because Breath of the Wild is one of the most recognizable exploration open world games. Um, but with very like a very cool visual style that I'm sure we'll, we'll get into and talk about. I guess this is technically a game designer reviews. Um, we're just doing it on a Tuesday. Oh, thank you, Nova. <laughs> Actually, let me update this. Waking okay. up to ash and dust. I wipe my ass and I serve my mud. I'm breathing in my tentacles. <laughs> there we go. Updated. But yeah, very excited to be here. I guess uh, other, before we jump into it, socials. Uh, you got Twitter and Tumblr for those stream updates. You got TikTok, YouTube, and Instagram for those um, very cool. Oh, thank you, Phantom Knight. Welcome in. Um, for the shorts, which I've been doing, I've been trying to be, I've been better about trying to do better. I'm trying to do three a week. Haven't hit that mark just yet, but I'm working on it. We got the VOD channels where I publish full length VODs. Um, not everything goes up there, but most stuff does. I just need to remember to actually upload it. I'm in the Telegram. If you want to ping when I go live, uh, that's a great place to get it. But yeah, hope you guys are having a lovely one. Let's jump into it. Pausing our music because uh, this game has, uh, from what I from what I was able to hear of it, a sub like an amazing amazing soundtrack. Um, just from what I was able to hear from like, I picked I listened to a little bit of the OST, um, which I was doing just to see, like oh is this a game that we want to listen to the soundtrack or do we want to play some vinyl? And the answer is, uh, we want to be we want to be listening to the soundtrack for this one hundred percent. Um, and we'll toggle that toggle dynamic lighting. Oh, that is bright. That's very bright. Aw, oh, that means a lot, Starlight. Thank you. I know, sorry. Oh, so I was late today. Sorry about being late. I apologize. I try really hard not to make that a habit because uh, that's important to me. Um, but my partner, Comet, was finishing up uh, its run of Tears of the Kingdom. And I had I wanted to see it all the way through. And I'm very happy I did because it like, oh, the ending was fantastic. So anyone else playing Tears of the Kingdom... I, you're gonna love it. It's gonna be great. I I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, yeah. So I, I I wanted to see that all the way through, and so that, that that's why we pushed streaming back a little bit. But now we're here. Cool. So uh, starting off, every game designer reviews, we're gonna take a look at the settings, specifically looking at accessibility stuff. Um, let me make sure that I can see my game audio and my microphone audio. Um, cause otherwise I will get out of whack. There we go. Okay, cool. Um, right off the bat, like stay like fairly standard options. I really like the font choice that they've gone with. I also like the fact that they're like bolding the, I'm pointing with my fingers to the screen. Y'all can't see that. Um, but bolding the font on the side, uh, when they, especially when they are like going from option to option, it's very subtle, but it's a cool way to like very visually draw attention to that. Um, and the font that they have, it's the sans serif one and the all bold. It just looks really clean. It's not monospaced. Uh, monospaced means every letter takes the same amount of space. Um, that's usually used for like code and that sort of thing where it's very important that it always lines up. 
Um, but it still has this quality of like very like formal or not formal, but like in place controlled, um, not sterile, but it's, it has this cool, like futuristic feel to it. Um, I'm not seeing, uh, so we have separate uh, sound effects and music volumes, which is very good to see different languages. Um, stand your standard sort of graphics options in terms of quality, draw distance, that sort of thing. Um, I'm not seeing too many, uh, let's see colors. Oh, that's very, that's very cool. Um, so I was, so they don't have a D, uh, like a dedicated accessibility menu, but that doesn't mean that they don't have a lot of settings in here that are for accessibility reasons. Mm-hmm. I may probably be. And so, uh, for colors, that's really cool. The high visibility is really nice to see, especially for people with vision problems. Line weight, also, that's for the, uh, I'm not sure what that, what that applies to, but I'm guessing also to help, help, help people see better. Text scale is just really nice. <laughs> Same thing. Like, that, and that's a feature that anybody can use. Like, that's not just something that's exclusive to people that are hard of, like, that have a hard time seeing. Anybody that, anybody that wants it a little bit, a little bit bigger, you know, it, it helps a lot. Also, photo mode from the settings menu is interesting. I'm guessing that just hides the UI. On um, the controls, um, again, having, uh, Having a button that you need to hold is pretty bad for motor accessibility because um, that it takes a good bit of pressure. Um, and so having that, I'm guessing, as a toggle is very nice. Hypothetically, if this menu had a flavor, what would it be? Mm, I'm thinking something like light and like airy, like a like a not a, not like a croissant because that's very buttery, but like a macar like a macaroon or like a what's it called? Like the it's the the egg sweet like the egg cookies that are. The egg white cookies. I forget what they're called. Oh my gosh! For I mean, I, we're during Christmas. My family makes them. Uh, we do it like you have to like put them overnight in the oven. What the fuck are they called? I'll I'll remember later. But something light, airy, fluffy, especially with like the the very like the white background here. Also, yeah. Easy fishing. I don't know. I, I I I. That's very cool that we can fish. And again, having having little options like this for accessibility is very nice. Um, <laughs> bro. Probably not the, the president, but... Hey, I really appreciate it, fan of Night. Yeah, sorry we're starting so late. Um, either, like, in the upcoming nights, we should be back to our normal starting time, which is around 7 p.m. PST, or, like, two hours ago. Um, but I'm just... I, I keep my schedule nice and flexible. Uh, so definitely... Sorry, I do I do apologize about being so late. Hey! Oh, my gosh! Oh! Buddy, thank you so much for swinging by. Here, let me, let me go over to our chatting screen real quick. Hey, welcome in, Raiders. It is lovely to see you, uh, buddy. How was your How was your stream? Doing some art. What, what, you, what were you working on? Oh, also Fireball two one zero six. Thank you for the follow. Welcome in, y'all. My name is Mossflower. I'm a game designer, and tonight we are reviewing Sable. It is an open world exploration game uh, with some really cool visual styles. We're just getting started, so y'all uh, showed up right on time. Hey, Silverith, welcome in. Thank you for the follow. And Olven Aspiration, thank you for the follow as well. Oh my gosh, so many good beans. But yeah, buddy, how was your stream? What, what, what were you guys working on? But yeah, welcome in, y'all. Uh, yeah, no, around here we stream uh, Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday. Uh, we do some vinyl on the side. Um, tonight's not a vinyl night because we're listening to the soundtrack for this game. Um, but yeah, no, we, we, we keep it chill around here. Oh my... Holy shit! Plush Red Panda Avatar. That's awesome. Also, Anon. Holy shit, thank you for the five gifties. That means a lot. God, that... I'm... I'm I gotta use my, my fucking blushy mode because that's what I'm doing. Holy shit. Thank you. If that's one of the Raiders, like, thank you so much that you enjoyed the vibes in the first, you know, 60 seconds you were here to do that. Holy shit, y'all. I really appreciate that. But yeah, welcome in, y'all. Thank you so much for swinging by, buddy. Again, thanks for the raid. Um, yeah, we like to keep the vibes cozy around here. Um, yeah, we're just jumping into this game. So like, y'all are here for the, for the beginning of it with us. No worries, Nova. Thank you. And with that, let's get into it. Um, I ha I've had the I got this through Humble Bundle, and I've been pretty excited to play it. Um, this is also this is uh, Vampire Weekend's album "Father of the Bride" that we're listening to on our our breaks and in our intro. Um, one of just one of my favorite albums. My my roommate Adam uh, got it first, and that's like one of the first albums I listened to on this record player, actually. Okay, so pretty so. It's obvious they thought about accessibility because they have some good options for that. We haven't played, so we don't really know whether it's, you know, that, that's the thing is some indie games, you don't need a lot of accessibility options because the game design itself is inherently accessible. 
So I'm going to reserve judgment on that before we, you know, until we get into the game here. And yeah, we were about to start a new game. I love the UI is very slick, clean, angular. Anyway, that sort of reminds me of, um, like, Islamic art, almost. But yeah, welcome in again, y'all. My ADHD has such a hard time with silence. There we go, let's go. The shaders in this game and like the the 3D graphics, I've, I've been looking forward to playing around with this in a while, for a while, because it's such this unique visual style. It's very, it's doing like, almost like cell shading but taking it to a really high degree. So it's still 3D, but in a way that really looks flat. Like a comic book almost, you know? Oh geez, Starlight, I'm sorry. Also, face, sheesh. Starting off in Meteor Res with some really cool vibe setting. Enjoying the instrumentation here, sort of the flutes, the light on, like light ambiance. Quest started the ceremony. View quest log, okay. I'll the move sable. Okay, easy enough. Yeah, and the animations have, it looks like, pretty limited frames on them. Like, we're running this at 30 frames per second. That is way less than that. Um, which definitely seems very intentional to sort of give it an aesthetic. Uh, I mean, like, I mean, uh, Spider Verse does that. I know the new one just came out. I haven't seen it yet, um, but that's something that the original does. Is it plays around with the, the timing of the frames to get different animation effects in, and that's really cool that they're able to pull something like that off in 3D here. Okay. Ceremony. I should head back to camp, and that's all the detail we get. We can jump. The game did not tell us to jump. But we, we we figured that out. So pretty. It's very yeah. Comic book style is exactly what is exactly what I'm thinking here. Oh, button. That's pretty self-explanatory. Also, a great way to sort of tutorialize without giving a tutorial. You know, the player would pretty naturally just run on this button to open it, but now the player knows. Hey, green doors open. Gr the green buttons open the doors. Now we got A to jump, and we here we go. <laughs> that would be fun. Climbing, move towards a wall to begin climbing. Uh, keep an eye on your stamina. Okay, this is why people compare it to Breath of the Wild. That makes a lot more sense. Ah, oh, the shadows are so cool. Just slowly moving up. I wonder if, if that's infinite or if the day cycle here really is just like three minutes long. Um, I'm gonna see if I can turn up camera sensitivity a little bit. Oh, we got an inventory, we got clothing. Uh, we'll go through that in a second. I'm just trying to get to settings. Controls, camera sensitivity. Turn that up. Oh, a little bit too high. That's what I get for playing too many shooters, is super, like, <laughs> super high sensitivity. Okay, inventory. We got child's mask. Blank looking mask worn by all the children of the dunes. Most kids customize theirs for fun, but more traditional clans frown on that sort of self expression. Also, getting just a little bit of lore here with with the in-game text. Ibexi Children Top. My old, my old Ibexi Children Top and Hood, a hand-me-down from Yara. The scratchiness reminds me of home. Aw. Comfy sandals for exploring sandy places. Easy to get sand out of, but not the best for climbing. Sweet. Assuming we can't go this way. Nope. <laughs> also, I really appreciate the use of the like the colors here. All very muted, sort of desert dune colors, except for the few places we have emissions, like that door, super bright. And it makes the, the things like the green and like the blue here, as like the light, the shadow, really pops because of it. Crouch. And then out in the open world, oh. That's so cool. Okay, so we got some sort we got some over there, some sort of dam. 
We got something in the sky, some sort of airship. It's not that the door doesn't blend in, it's that they, they're, the devs are calling attention to the door as an important object. Uh, there's like a spider thing over there, house over there, definitely a arch or sculpture over there, and like a, some buildings over there, and I guess we'll just jump down. See if we, I wonder if we have fall damage. I'm guessing we'll figure that out. Well, we'll figure that out sooner than later, huh? Also loving the, again, loving the instrumentation here. It's like the drums here. Hope we get a sprint. Yep, stamina meter. Okay, I, I see why people why people compared this to Breath of the Wild. The Ibex camp. A little flute. I'm gonna turn off dynamic lighting for now. It's that's way too intense. And honestly, my normal colors are pretty flat and match pretty well with the environment. I'll have to tune that down later. Okay. Oh, getting in cutscene. Less cutscene and more just... Oh, thank you, Cap. Thank you for three months. That means a lot. Holy shit. No, I'm not sure, Starlight. I can feel Jotty smiling behind her mask. Just as I know, she can feel the teeth-bearing little grimace behind mine. I'm nervous, and she's softly, sweetly amused. In her eyes, I probably have very little to worry about. If I had to hazard a wild guess or some sort of, like coming of age ceremony is is what we're is what we're coming up against. You know you've nothing to worry about, don't you, Sable? Oh, and we got dialogue choices. And yep, I don't I know, I know I'm not worried. Also giving us a little bit of personification of our character. I do like it when the main character isn't just a projection for us where they have their own thoughts and feelings apart from the player. I know, I know. I tell Jody that I know, but that but that it hasn't quite sunk in yet. She chuckles. Also, the pro style here of just not giving us the dialogue, it's almost, it, it, ha, it reads much more like a book than it, did, than it does, like, just conversation. Hey, Arcane, welcome in! And I actually really like that, because it feels more like a story or a myth or a fable than it does just a, you know, an RPG interaction. I promise you, Sable, you're fine. But I do know how you are. You're, you're nervous. You're going to be nervous until you've started, and then you'll act like you've been do doing it your whole life. Remember the first time you rode a bike? You wouldn't even let me put put you on the seat. You were so afraid. Your hands were like little claws gripping onto me. I feel the memory in my fingers. Oh, I am I am in love with the writing of this game already. Holy shit, that's such an evocative way to phrase it. I'm really I really appreciate this style of dialogue of like including sort of the book style prose in between just the actual uh, like worded segments. But then I promised you it was gonna be all right. I told you how much I loved riding my bike as a young woman and how wonderful the wind felt through fabric. Suddenly there you were. You sat down, you leaned forward and put those little grasping claws on the handles and you were off. Yeah. <laughs> and I remember thinking, just watching you tear over the sand. Look at her, she can do whatever she wants. Jody reaches out and places a hand on the edge of my mask. And you can, Sable. I take a breath. Ooh, I wonder if the staying actually does stay. I don't know where to start. Jody's stories war Jody's story warms me, but I still I still I st but I feel too overwhelmed to let it settle. I tell her with a sigh that I don't know where to start, where to begin. She chuckles. Well, I can help with that. You'll need to talk to Hilal and Driss. Driss should already have made, made the arrangements for your bike, and Hilal will share something, well, let's say as useful as it is fun. Hmm? Ooh, little bit of apprehension. Also very fun when both the character and the play and the and the viewer or player don't know the same thing. I forget there's a term for that, for the amount of information you have versus the amount of information the character has. Hey, Oz, welcome in. It's going pretty well. I'm really enjoying the dialogue so far. After that, I suppose we'll see you off. What if I choose the wrong path? Ask Jotty what will become of me if I choose the wrong path. There are no wrong paths, Sable. Or right ones. 
I'll be glad if you choose to stay with, with the Ibexi. But truth be told, I'll be glad no matter what. So long as you're happy. Oh. Whatever you decide, you do so with my blessing. So don't ever, ever try using me as an excuse to come home early, huh? She knows me. Listen, what a sweet relationship that is communicated in such a rich and deep manner. Without, with, like, what do we get? 10, 12 maybe lines of dialogue? And we really can feel the depth and breadth of this character's history. Of Sable's history with Jotty, you know? It's just one conversation. We, we understand that Jotty, you know, raised Sable, that they helped them grow up, that they, you know know them well and love them and have been this kind, stable figure in this life up till now and are now supporting them as they take this big step. Oh, I, I am... I'm sorry I'm gushing. I'm, I'm not going to apologize. I'm gushing over this writing because it is incredible. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And so, like, like, for me, like, I find it in a book where if I know the information and the players don't, it sucks. And, uh, like, it, it's a good tension, because it's nice to know because it can build tension. Like, if you know there's a monster behind the door, but the character doesn't, you'll get tense because you know what's about to happen. But, say, like, I'm looking at you, I forget, whatever the, it is, the last book of the Mistborn trilogy, um, where you, you, the reader, know, like, the, like, know what needs to happen the entire book. And it takes forever for the characters to realize it. It is super annoying. And so you want to play with that tension, you know? Yeah, exactly. And yeah, when the, all when all the characters know something that you don't, that that does that's intriguing. That's not necessarily annoying. It builds curiosity in a way that I think is very cool. I have something to give you. A compass to help you on your journey. It's the same one I used on my gilding. Yep, definitely some sort of coming of age quest. An artifact, you might say. I take the device in my palm. It fits naturally there. Perfectly weighted and crafted. Each component slides together with incredible, satisfying precision. Thank you. Quest updated. Okay, need to complete tax tasks for Hilal and Driss. And we got a compass button. Oh, that's cool. Oh, and it's, a, and it's our quest marker, which is very nice. No worries, Starlight. Again, the, the like the color palettes they're choosing for this, like very nice, subtle, desaturated in a way, very deserty, you know, in a way that it's just so satisfying. Patty, as I approach Hello, they give. I also like not having everyone's names above their heads, that sort of thing. Like it's very, it feels more organic. Yep, that's fair, Oz. Yeah, it, it's a tension that you want to play with. You don't want to you don't want to over abuse any one like style of storytelling too much, you know. As I approach Halal, they give an enthusiastic wave. I've appreciated Halal's verve and vigor, and on a day like this, I'm ready to match it, but with a touch of nerves for balance. Also, shout out for disability rep. Dis dis uh, a character missing a limb is awesome, and in a sci-fi setting where they got a cool like cyborg leg, very very cool to see. Sable, take this. Gilding stone. Halal hands me a small, round stone. As it nests on my palm, I feel a warmth not borrowed from Halal's hands, but emanating from within. I run my thumb over it and find it softly electric, like static on cloth. Ugh, the writing is just so evocative. I'm in love with it. Let's see. I didn't bring anything for you. Also, you know, small things like this showing that this culture is very, like, if someone gives you a gift, like, it's it's nice to exchange one back sort of thing. What, what is this? I try to sound less confused than I am, but I ask Kalal what this is. Oh, Sable, you can't leave without it. What I've just given you is a gilding stone. What do you feel? I tell Halal what I feel. Ah. I'm glad to hear, hear, hear from what you played was really good, though. I've been, I've been, I've been really, really looking forward to this. <laughs> Connectedness, fuzziness, electricity. Hmm. <laughs> Pizza. Uh. Connectedness. Then you're doing it right. What you feel in that stone is openness. 
look at the stone. It seems quite closed. Gilding stones are vessels for the perpetual. Also, capitalizing like a word like that to show that it's a, you know, it's a noun and not a, not just a verb. Or no, wait, no, sorry. I don't know. I don't. I'm not an English major. I'm an engineering major. I'm not going to pretend to know know the names for words. But it's it is a proper noun. You know, they suck up its power like little sponges and hold it there for you to channel. Right now it's empty, dormant, and waiting for you to fill it up. I ask how I can do this. May uh, play maybe four or five hours worth in a sitting. Been a minute since I played this game, uh, but I feel like you shouldn't come up off the stream. Okay, yeah, uh, it's about eight hours long, so we should be good. I ask how I can do this. Take it to the temple ruins at the edge of the canyon. You'll be able to activate it there. All right, cool. Hillel claps, th claps their hands twice and bobs a little. I appreciate their good mood at a time like this. Also, did you fucking notice, because I didn't, that Halal uses they them pronouns? Fucking disability rep and queer rep. So subtle. So nice. Happy Pride Month, y'all. That's, oh my god. I'm really, like, that's how you do it. Like, people complain about, like, wokeness being shoved in anyone's face. That does, that's, that aid, that doesn't happen. Like, you are, like, it is not a bad thing to sort of overcorrect on areas that have been historically marginalized. Um, but this is how you do it. A character, their disability wasn't even mentioned in this conversation. It was just a part of who they are. Their queerness was not mentioned as part of their cut this conversation. It's just a part of who they are. It's part of their character. And at some point it might be a, an essential part of a quest line or a part of a storyline. And it's fine if that is. But the character can exist, queer and disabled, in the world without those being the things that define them. There are uh, Everything else about Holal that we know is not, you know, they're not defined by their queerness or by their disability, which is very, very important for good representation. Come back to me once that's done. I want to hear all about it. As I'm about to leave, Halal stops me. Oh, you haven't gotten your bike yet, have you? Oh, thank you, Cap. Oh, that's a good. That's a. That's a good. That's a good catch, Cap. It's a bit of a trek to the temple. Uh, so go see Driss. Uh, he was meant to get that get that ready for you. Yes. I remember Jotty's words now, and I tell Halal, I'll go and see Driss. All right. We got our quest log. Uh, activate the gilding stone. All right, go talk to Driss. What are you? Floaty robot thing that I can interact with? Post box. Lock it in. Hello, Sable. I can't, it's hard for me to do voices because I'm not very confident with it. If I do try to do voices this stream, just be aware. It will not be the same voice for the whole series. Oh, thank you, Cap. That was the first, like, I hadn't written a article for hire in a pretty long time. And so I was very happy with how that one turned out. On red messages, you're up. Have a good day. All right, sec. Where is Driss? Are they down here? Another bit further. Sprint. Oh, thank you for the pets, Cap. They're way out here, huh? Oh, wait. Oh, it... Depending on which, um... Which quest I've selected is, is, what, is what does the quest markers. That's cool. Yep, as I, I do believe, like, it is... I have a pretty beefy graphics card. Um, based on how intentional sort of the coloring is and the shaders and the, and the materials here, I really do think that it is an intentional choice to keep it lower frames to make the action feel more impactful. Um, it's something I mentioned before. The Spider-Verse uh, movies do this very intentionally. They don't do it the whole movie, but they do it at in, sp in specific spots or with action scenes um, as a sort of stylistic choice. Yeah, exactly, Oz. Yeah. Also, thank you for the hydrate, Anna's. This definitely looks like the camp of someone who's doing bikes. Meaddy. Though I've been told not myself not to be too eager, it's all I can do not to race up to Driss. Driss is the camp manager. 
He's been difficult to get a hold of lately, but I now strongly suspect that he's been working on, on my bike in secret. Perhaps it's extra beautiful, or has some custom feature. What will its name be, I wonder? How fast will it go? Will my legs feel sore, or will I get used to it? Oh, heck yeah. No, go ahead, Oz. I have not seen it yet. I'm very much looking forward to it, but please, please, please feel free to talk about it. Also, hell yeah, star hell, hell yeah Starlight. Sable, or <laughs> hello. Hello, how are you today? I was told you something special for me. Uh, Jody sent me to speak with you. Did she? What about? I tell him it was something special, and then make make a leading gesture slowly, trying to be perfectly cool and confidential. I love the characterization of like a kid, very excited but very nervous for this next step. Feels very realistic. But I can't do it. I'm too keen and the world's words spill out. I asked Driss if he might sort of possibly have a bike for me. And again, like the prose style and not always relying on just actual like dialogue back and forth makes it feel more like a story than like RPG dialogue. Your bike. He yells it like it's an idea he's just had. <laughs> your bike, of course, right? Yes, your bike that I was meant to, that I prepared for you because today is your gilding. Yes. Driss nods along with me. Yes, of course, right. Yes, yes, I do have that. My blood runs cold. Has he forgotten? By which I mean I arranged it for you in a, well, it's sort of a tutorial for you. A tutorial? Yes, exactly, a learning experience. You see, Sable, before one can ride their own bike, they must prove they can ride a bike by taking a test ride on a different bike. <laughs> sure. I think about it and find I've never heard of that part of the gilding, but Driss does seem earnest. Sort of. So instead of worrying about your bike, I'd like you to try this bike as a test. Just get, uh, gestures to the sand cutter at his side. Ah, oh, cool. It's quite old and a little shabby. A test if I've ever seen one. Uh, what's the bike's name? Driss seems scandalized. That's a bit personal, don't you think? Just sand cutter will do for now. Oh my gosh! Oh, I love it uh, when like uh, groups have these very like deep personal names for objects or things that are close and personal to them. Like especially since like someone's bike. I'm assuming just again making broad assumptions about this world that we'll dive into. But if someone's bike is like core core, core part of their like identity, their survival, so it having a name is important. And it, and it keeping its name secret is also important. Oh, I love that. Youngsters these days, they ask, ask, always asking questions. Okay, so for Spider-Punk alone, it took two to three years to do, since each part of it, of him was animated on on separate timings. The body on three twos, the guitar on fours, and the outline he has on two, two, two ones. Oh, that's so cool. I've heard a lot of good feedback, like, good things about Spider-Punk. Now, ride that ring through the ring, ring and back. And here's some advice for you, my young gilder. Don't fall off. When you're not riding it, your hover bike will appear as a blue icon on your compass. Okay, so. The Spider-Verse movies are pit like pinnacles of animated achievement. Honestly, if you if you haven't seen them, please do watch them. They are fantastic. Also, accelerate? Strafe? I didn't see I didn't see everything there. Um, controls. Show controls. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Call bike accelerate. Change bike mode is A. Strafe, steer, get off. Okay. The smoke, and also very much of a tester bike. Very bumpy ride. It's spewing smoke. <laughs> yeah, but we did it. 100% agree, Oz. Like, honestly, those Spider-Verse films are incredible. Incredible. They are feats, feats of filmmaking in a way that I think is very, very cool. Easily the best, like, Marvel movies. For me, I think, period. I return to Driss, who somehow manages to seem caught off guard despite knowing I was coming. Sable, congratulations. How was your first pre-glide ride bike? A pre-glide ride. Any strange rattles? Unexplained hissing? Small fires? 
What do you mean, fires? <laughs> Surely you'd notice if you were on fire, even a little bit. Uh, yes, absolutely. Well, obviously it didn't happen, so I think we're fine. Okay, Driss. Driss, is this bike dangerous? Well... He doesn't finish. Have you already been by Halal? Oh, right! Oh... Sable, Sable's beginning to catch on that there might not be a bike ready. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, exactly, Oz. So, so just artistic. I nearly forgotten about Halal, and thanks to Driss for the reminder, before at least dodging him a little about the bike. I asked him if, if, I, if I'll still be getting one. Well, you're getting used to the sand, this is sand cutter. That's something, huh? You can borrow it to run your little errands. My little errands? And Halal's got something to show you, too. Help you out uh, with more of that, er, mobility you're after. With my confidence in this exercise only lightly tarnished, I thank Driss very much for his help and his bike, and I depart for Halal. Okay, quest complete. I love the, like, the iconography and stuff. It's very cool. Mr. Distraction, welcome in. How is your night going? Bottom. Uh, let's go activate the gilding stone while we're at it. Oz, absolutely no worries. This is a, this is a um, special interest dump or like info dump free, like not free, um, encouraged zone. Like this is like. I can't tell if this bike is fat. If I'd be faster just running than being on this bike. Also, Starlight, thank you for the hydrate. Hey, Billowing Butterfly, thanks. <laughs> Welcome in. I'm waking up to ash and dust. I walk my past and I slept moments. I'm breathing in. I genuinely, this bike is so slow. <laughs> I'm gonna hop off here. Let's see. Oh? I think you're right, Oz. Thank you. That makes a lot more sense. The light guitar? Oh, God. Instrumentation, I'm just love, I am adoring so far. Overstimulated by life, uh, but I'm determined to have a fan that's, 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 that's the mood, Miss Distraction. I feel that hardcore. This weekend was a lot of social stuff for me. Overstimulation was definitely like on the menu for a lot of it. But I, I'm, gl I'm glad you're determined to have a nice night. Hell yeah. Yeah, with that, with the wall climbing and, uh, like, stamina mechanic, I can totally understand why people would compare this to Breath of the Wild, which I do want to play, and we may end up playing on stream if people want that. Well, that's a good call out, Oz. I know, right? It's very, it's cool, it's like, it's 3D, but it's, it's all the shaders are done very flat colors with, like, penciled in details. It gives a sort of comic book 2D feeling to it. Also, cool butterfly guy. Rad. Gotta love it. I agree, Oz. I mean, the way they do, like, shadows and highlights as well is so cool by, like, saturating and desatch. Oh, shit! Huh? Well, guess we'll have to find a different way out, huh? Yep, I... <laughs> I have done a, a TikTok with that audio, actually, Starlight. Activate the Gilding Stones. Let's go. Hello, Toadin. Welcome in. How are you doing? It is nice to see you, dog. And thank you for the squish. Then plot armored knees. Exactly. I don't think... I'm not sure... 
we have not been introduced to a health mechanic. I'm not sure if we have, um, what's it called? Fall damage. This is ominous. There are so few things in this world that light up. Eating salsa and enjoying the vibes. A hell yeah. Also very good. We're talking a bit about Spider-Verse because this, this game also uses the, like, condensed frames for different movements, that sort of thing. Or not condensed, but like fewer frames for different movements. And the music has been fantastic so far, and the writing is phenomenal, so I'm very much having a good time. The stone thrums like the beat of a heart as I approach the altar. Am I afraid? Exhilarated? Or maybe it feels right. I am ready for Rahana to know me. I am ready to know myself. I feel her curiosity in this sacred place. I know I am in her sight. Oh, I need to go on a quest like this. Please do hello. I, I, I want to see you quite soon. Oh, um... Oz, after this cutscene, we'll, let's adjust some options and see if it helps. Our stone's getting real hot. Oh, we're floating. Hell of a, hell, hell of a, you know, spiritual experience, right? Oh, in other words, much more saturated too. Oh, kind of. Smoke too soon. Oh, the blue glow. Yeah, the way that they're playing with saturation in the colors for this game is incredible. Oh. I hope I didn't trigger that somehow. I don't think so, though, because this game has been very intentional about that to this point. We have a few settings here. Display, line weight. Uh, we can't we can't change our field of view. Um, we can change the lines to thick. Does that help by any chance? Because we can also change it to thin, which is also interesting. Um, but let's see, we have. Colors, and we can. We also have high visibility, which if, if if the high visibility would help, I'm more than I'm more than happy to keep that on, because it is a it is a cool effect. But okay, cool. So we'll, we'll keep it at default. Does the color does the, does the high visibility color help at all? Okay, cool. Let's see if we can tune that a little bit. Um... Oh wait, all colors off. It's very desaturated. Um, and then all the way on, completely saturated. Okay. I think I'm gonna, we're going to bring it if, it, if it works for you. We'll bring it a little, little, little bit in the middle. So we still get the, the effect of it, but it's a lot more colors. Okay, sweet. And speak up if it isn't. I'm more than happy to turn it up because, uh, as much as I love the graph, the game's graphical style is not perfect. Okay, sweet. It it does it is not diminish, and that's why that's a perfect example of an accessibility option. You know. All right. I did see when I put the game this game in Twitch platforming, and so I'm a little bit scared of that because I'm not great at that. Um. Uh, normally, Cap, we try to go. Oh. I'm not, I'm not making that. Normally, I try to go for about three hours. Um, recently, uh, I've been keeping my streams. I've uh, moved it a bit later um, because Comet is currently on a bit of an earlier work schedule, and I want to spend time hanging out with them. Um, so I moved my streams back a little bit so I could have some more time during the day to hang out with them. Um, but I don't actually get more hours in my day when I do that. So that's why streams are currently around two hours or two and a half-ish. 
So I'm going to try to go for about two hours tonight if I can. But I do, I've been trying to wake up early again so that I can leave work early. So that I have more time to hang out with folks. Yeah, no worries. That, that's exactly what that, re that, redeem is for, that redeem is for. A very cool power up. Oh, hell yeah, Oz. Yeah, you totally should. Word. Because I bet, I bet Oz, the fact that they have that option, I bet, I bet they got some feedback from people. Um, does our hover have a limit? It doesn't. Okay, sweet. So it has a consistent rate of falling, but it doesn't seem to run out. So we can keep it going for a while. Um, I don't think it's on Game Pass anymore. I bought it on Steam, so I'm, I'm not I'm not a hundred percent sure. Okay. So we got both our quests are taking us back to Halal, so that, that's where we gotta go. Also, the thrumming of our sans, our sans gamers engine with the music. Ah, so, so good. Ah, oh, that's too bad. I'm sure it'll go on sale then soon. If, it, if something hits Game Pass, it'll probably also hit Humble Bundle at some point. It'll, it's also more likely to go on sale pretty often. I'm guessing Hillel is going to show us how to get more stamina. 25 is not bad. It's definitely a cool artistic like experience that seems worth that price. You know? I am a sucker for stringed instruments in video game soundtracks. Holy shit, a bit of light guitar. Ugh. When I return to Halal, it's clear they know what, uh, what, I've, what I've just experienced. They're excited on my behalf in a way that makes me miss them before I've even left. Ugh. Isn't it incredible? How does it feel? Exciting. True freedom. Strange. Safe. Like a warm hug. Oh. And Oz, thank you for the hat? Hey, mix it up. Do we want to give me the hat? That'd be very cool of you. Um, and let me replay it. Ba -ba 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 -ba, give Moss a hat. Weird. That is such a nice right way of describing it. Hillel's mood, Hillel's mood doesn't darken, but the sigh they let out holds a bit of sorrow. You're very lucky, you know. I miss it so much. That feeling just floating on the breeze. Possibly? I think everyone's wearing masks, so it's hard to tell if that's... I don't think that's their eye color. I think it's the, like, the mask lens color. But I suppose it's best that it fades with age, huh? Or else I might never... and I might never have come back from my guilting. I'd just be out there heaving myself into chasms. Okay, so apparently the kids, the kids in this world at some point get the ability to glide and then go on platforming adventures as a coming-of-age ceremony. Oh, you're good, Oz. Uh, I'll leave my I'll leave myself self in the chasms for you. Um, I wish we could all do it. I tell Halal wish I wish it was something we could keep perpetually. So do I, Sable. So do I. I know people manage to keep it up, but I don't know I, I don't know that I've got the time to practice as much as they do. It takes really serious focus. Halal laughs, even if it's even if there's a bit of regret in it. And I certainly haven't got that. Still, I suppose the gilding wouldn't mean much if it were all gains and no loss. Hmm? I think about that, but describe that there is already too much loss on my mind to consider it much further. I am saying goodbye to my clan, my family, my home, my childhood. To lose the perpetual is a sacrifice for another time. You're going to love it out there, Sable, even when you don't. My advice, try to have fun. There's a lot, of, there's a lot to be said about ritual and independence and all that out there, but... The world's an easier place if you put joy first. Oh, I love that sentiment. I thank Halal for their advice and for their help, and tell them I'll miss them. It'll be over before you know it. A, a warning and a reassurance, all in one. I say goodbye to Halal, a 
Before I go, Halal gestures towards the tower. It seems Caesar wishes to see me before I leave the clan. Alright, and... Also, while I'm at it... Oh, yep. Oh, that, that took of both... That took care of uh, both quests in one dialogue tree. That's nice. Jotty greets me warmly. I didn't notice how hunched over Jotty was. Hello, little glider. It's so... Uh, <laughs> that's big better to you. That's so strange getting called that. I tell Jotty how strange it is being called glider instead of sable or even clan child. Just trying, just trying to get you used to it. She seems to really like it, and maybe I like it too. Oh, my little glider. I like the... I like the, the extra dialogue that's... Definitely seems optional. It's a big glider to you. I tell Gunjati, it's actually a big glider. She laughs. You're right, you are. Sable, loaded adult, and big glider. I'll keep that in mind. That was that was sarcastic, for sure. Beautiful, beautiful colors. Oh, jeez. Love it. Meaddy. Ciso is an outclanner to the Ibexi, but I've known her for nearly as long as I can recall, and think of her more of a kind of distant relation than any sort of outsider. Machinists, I'm told, are given their posts, and by their training, their code, they must must go to where they are needed, but Ciso has been among us for so long, it's easy to forget it's an assignment first and foremost. As far as many of us are concerned, she is one of us. I think there's a perception among the other clans that the Ibexi are quite insular, that our designation of Ibixi versus Outclanners suggests some nervous othering of those who are unlike us. But in practice, such things are more a result of our nomadic nature. We seek to know who will travel with us and who we must leave behind. But all are welcome to join. And I'm always pleased that Cizo did. Sable, how do you do, clan child? I can think of only one thing. And we get three things. No, oh, it's all bike. Excited for my bike. Cizo has a throaty quality to her, her voice, and it rumbles through her mask when she laughs. It's, she's quite a serious person most days, and I'm always torn between pride and alarm when I manage to make her chuckle. Yes, Jotty told me how excited you were. Cizo sniffs. She also told me Driss would be coming along to get your bike together, but I think he may have... I knew it. What? I hadn't meant to say that part out loud, so I tell her I was just clearing my throat. I don't begrudge, I don't begrudge Driss for his forgetfulness. Were I tasked with so many odds and ends, I might just be just as scattered. And besides, this will be good for you. I want you to scavenge the hoverbike parts yourself. I'm gonna make my own hoverbike? That sounds like an adventure. Technically, shouldn't Driss do it? I tell Caesar that I like the sound of that. A little adventure before my big one. It's more meaningful than you know. To bond with one's bike before it is taken taken form is more privileged than labor. Here, take this. Caesar hands me something. This is a navigator. You can use it to mark waypoints on your compass. It should be useful in finding the old parts. I ask Caesar where to start looking. Our bikes are reborn in the ruined ships, and fragments spread apart. A good start would be that ship down near the camp. You'll find another up, up near the Great Rock, near the other side of the canyon, and another behind the old dam on the hill. Use your navigator to mark that down if needed. You'll be you'll need to gather a control panel, a power supply, and a calibrator. I'll be back before you know it. Uh, do most gliders make their own bikes? Only the lucky ones. I tell Caesar I'll see her soon, and head, head off in a search of components. Together we will create something new out of the old. Ah, uh, I love religions that like integrate technology into their practices. Um we can't move just yet. And I can't move. Oh, navigator. Okay. Oh, that's sweet. I love that effect. Okay. Marker. 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 Sweet. Like incorporating tech into the practices, there's something like remarkably, remarkably sacred about 
building this piece of transportation that will become your survival and your method of travel and movement, you know? So fucking cool. Also, uh, since we can glide, no fall movement, well, we should go get our sand skimmer, or, or our temporary one, while we're at it. Where is it? Over here. Love all the little details of the camp. Nice and low poly. But it still feels like rich and lived in in a way that I think is very cool. Alright, there's the temp bike. I wonder if we'll get to name the bike ourselves. I kind of, I, I both kind of hope we do and kind of hope we don't because it'd be cool for Sable to be able to name their bike, you know, themselves. Oh, there are markers. That's cool. I also, to be fair, three waypoints are not that hard just to keep <laughs> keep in my head. I might have ADHD and memory problems, but oh, that much I that much I, I can handle. Hey, cool. Old ship, old technology. Time to scavenge. <laughs> Thank you. Oh god, I need to catch I need to catch up on Root Tales of Magic. That's that that, that that's what that, that podcast is where that's from. Uh, there's nothing to use to be there's nothing of use to be found in the ship, but I notice a blinking light flashing on the dashboard of the cockpit. I I'm not gonna leave it alone. It's cool that it gives us the option to do that. I'd love to see like the breakdown of how many people actually choose to leave it alone. A voice crackles from the machiner machinery in front of me. It sounds like a recording. It's barely audible. Stop messing about with those buttons, you absolute idiot. Sorry, Raymond. Concentrate. I don't think I have to remind you how much work it, work it was to get this far. We're almost there. Oh, thank you for the stretch, Oz. I will do that. And the hydrate. And the hat. Thank you. All right, let's see if that old machine is told that holds us holds up. If not, they'll be hate up, held to pay. I hear the sound of mechanical adjustments being made. Three clicks, buttons being pre pressed, perhaps. Okay, when I push this orange thing, pull that lever hard. Yes, Raymond. The sound of a click and a loud grunt before a snapping sound. Oh no! Oh, on Ron, on Rana's mask. Not that hard. You've torn it out. Suddenly, the speakers are filled with static and a low rumble that gradually increases in pitch. Oh, uh oh, oh, mouse! Thank you for the pets. And then the sounds of someone cheering. It worked. We're flying. More cheering. Is that the sound of someone dancing? Okay, okay. Let's focus. This thing is moving fast. We need to slow down a bit. How do we do that, Raymond? Let me check the machinist's notes. A long pause. The rumbling static sound, sound that started playing when the ship took off is still increasing in pitch. Raymond, that lever, Toma, the one you just ripped out. We're going too fast. We're gonna crash. We need to try to. The recording cuts off there. Ugh. Also, the inside of the ship being, like, the, the colors of the technology and the inside of the ship contrast so dramatically from the outside and the desert in a really cool way. Okay, what to do? That wasn't helpful. Oh, hello. Saima, are you looking for the for a calibrator? I am immediately on guard. Saima has always been a mischief maker and taken tremendous pleasure in tormenting me. In theory, I am older, more experienced, and should be able to serve, able to withstand it. In practice, you won't find it here. I've hidden it. You'll never find it. Never, never. She never fails to get to me. <laughs> You're a horrible child. Simon laughs off my irritation, but I'm not going to give her the satisfaction. I cross my arms and try to effect a change. I'll give you the, the calibrator. I put up my hand, proud of myself for standing tall before Saima. If you give me some beetles. That's a fair trade, isn't it? Something you want for something I want. Right? It's a, it's a, it's a matter of self-expression, at least for this tribe. 
Really, really cool. I know, I saw that dialogue option and I had to go with it. <laughs> I try to decide if it's more mature to push her over and steal the calibrator or to acquiesce. I don't like the, the, the writing is so uh, evocative is the word that I keep using and I really feel that's, that stands true. But then I simply stifle a sigh and shake your little hand. Perhaps some of the adults in camp know where I can find some. I must start a beetle detour. Perfect, okay. Did we <laughs> Dude, I'm not gonna run her over. That'd be that would be me. But we will we'll head to the we'll head to the other spot. I think we've been up there. Oh, that's the whatever the floating thing is. Needle devour. I mean, hey, you never know. They're a very good source of protein. Something moving up here. What are you? For a game that with uh, no voice acting, there's so much depth to all the dialogue that you can almost hear what they're saying. At least to me. Exactly. Exactly. That's that's the sign of extremely, extremely expertly written dialogue. Like, holy shit. Hello, friend. I'm getting my controller's vibrating, which it never does. It's vibrating faster. Worm. X. Chum egg. Okay. Chum egg. Offered, offered up by chums when planting themselves into the ground. Perfectly smooth and hard as a rock, these eggs seem to float with how light they are. And there must be a good place to deliver these. With a little synth there. It's almost like... I'm really loving the soundtrack so far. We should probably bring our bike all the way up, huh? Also, I don't think there's fall damage. This game seems more focused on the story and the puzzles than it does on health or... Like, the resource that cares about is stamina. Also, our bike is really struggling to get up. Oh, yeah, worm! And quite a friendly one, it seems. Oh. Really struggling to get up this this hill. Alright. There's a boat back in here. Climb up the ladders. Trying to find a part we need to build our bike. I'll be like, the flat colors are is a really cool stylistic choice because it's the environment still feels so rich and fleshed out. Because um, like I've spent a lot of time in VR chat, you know, building worlds and stuff recently in Unity, which has been fun. But that means I've I've experimented a lot with like shaders and materials and that sort of thing, like trying to how to get like realistic textures for it to look really good. And so to see something like this, where it is literally a flat color, but still like the environments have so much. That going on with them that's really cool is really interesting. Are you saying, hey, you got this? Uh, go somewhere else? Helps guide you, helps, helps guide riders uh, to the collectible hunt guides without fear of accidentally picking something up. Exactly, yeah. Oh, chest. We got 20 currency. Damn it. World, world still has capitalism. Let's, uh... I'm sure this won't have any consequences for us to open up the dam. I'm glad, it, I'm glad it wasn't full. Surely nothing bad will happen because of this. Um. I don't think we'll be able to climb all the way up if we were just going from the ground. But like that, we're just fine. I also like the movement on some of like the grasses and stuff. Like, they're not trying to make it realistic. They're really leaning into the sort of comic book style, almost, in a way that I think is very cool. And the way they're tutorializing the puzzles of, like, keeping it very simple. Battery, right here, goes into the very obvious battery receptacle, right here. 
so when we're gonna get to the I assume more complex puzzles later on they don't have they didn't have to tell us to do that we just now know oh atomic control panel okay we got it ships of old but that's not all that's in here huh Climb up and get anything? No, I think we're good. I think we're good. The camera makes me think that it doesn't want me to do this. Oh, and yeah, the, the game does not want me to climb up that. Because it looks like there's a gap up there, but I'm not sure where it leads. Or if it leads anywhere. I don't think it leads anywhere. Uh, but we are supposed to exit this way. It'd be nice if we had our uh, thing. Say lovey. Our bike. I wonder if there's like an exit that we could have biked up other than the other than the this one. Oh no, we had to climb over something. Crouch, get under the rock. Yeah, the flat colors definitely make it a little bit harder for like depth perception. Um, but so far the platforming areas have had a little bit more like shading and lighting than the others, which is very helpful. I can just stand up. Oh, more boat. So definitely this was a land with a lot of water. You don't have boats this big if you don't have a... And, or freaking dams that big if you don't have a lot of water. Sheesh. I wonder what happened. We're just going to be able to just barely make this. <sighs> yep, barely. Aw, it's a little shrine. With some birds. Thanks. We're taking the money from the shrine. No, that sucks. I was hoping it'd give us, like, Journey did, like, a little chance to meditate or something. But instead, we're just taking the money from the shrine. Oh. Oh, well. Oh. Y'all noticed that. Coming up here, I I thought, oh, this is a it's a dead fucking end. I have no clue where we're gonna go from here. And then turning around, oh, there's a boat leading up there. It did the this is inc impeccable level design. This is exactly what you want. It is um, uh, setting your level up in a way that the player camera is sort of always focused ahead, so they're focused on their next goal, not the end of the level. And so while we were down there, we couldn't see up here where we're going next. And so we were only focused on sort of our next step, you know? Meditating on the effects of capitalism. Ugh, oh, yeah. Exactly. So, sort of like... But also just like keeping... Like, if your player sees the end of the level, they're, they're not thinking as much about just the step that's right in front of them. You're able to sort of really tailor the experience if you're able to guide them like that. Um, again, that also does that really well is... Um, what is it? The Nathan Drake ones, um, Uncharted does that really well. There's a few, there's a really, and a, oh, Last of Us does that really well. There's a really good talk, I think on the GMTK channel, um, interviewing one of the Last of Us devs about, about one, uh, about, I think it's the zoo level and how they use that, that, um, technique specifically. Exactly. Yes. Yeah, it's it's sort of keeping the player going in the order you want them to without forcing them, you know? Like, because we didn't know it was here, we didn't know to try to jump it or try to, like, you know, section break something. Um, but now I genuinely don't know what to do. Hey, Brittery, welcome in. How you doing? I guess jump down. I guess we're, we're, we'll just try to go out the uh, go out the way we came in. Hey, Burger, how's your night going? 
Exactly, Oz. I mean, both perfectly valid ways to enjoy a game. But when you're going for a very, like, story or, like, platforming-based experience, use like, techniques like that can be very helpful. Versus you have games like uh, Tears of the Kingdom that are sort of built for sequence breaking, you know? It's, that's called emergent, like, emergent, emergent design, or not, uh, emergent, not storytelling. Well, there is emergent storytelling. Um, Breath of the Wild, or Tears of the Kingdom doesn't really do that, but uh, the sort of emergent gameplay of, um, you know, you, sequ you sequence breaking and you figuring that out is the gameplay, is the intended behavior. They wanted you to feel like you were beating the devs at their own game. That's, and it feels good, you know? And it's designed around that. Also, I like how, as we're getting the things, our quests are, like, manually placed indicators are going away. It's very smart. Just some minecrafting. Oh, heck yeah! Things are going very well. I am enjoying the fuck out of this game so far. Very chill. I think I just hit something and it went way up. Um, we're trying to get up there. Oh, hell yeah, Oz. I'm glad. Okay, how do we want to approach this? Looks like we have maybe multiple. Nope. This is this is the start. That rock over there looks like we can maybe climb off of it, but I don't think we have enough stamina for that just yet. Jump. Oh, are we not gonna have enough? Just barely, okay. Let's see, let's get a running jump. Bit of glide. Oh, the running was the bad choice because that, that lowered our stamina. But that used some of it up. Okay, I think this is the right chance. And going over here and then we'll glide over to the ship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Easy peasy. It just sounded like the the synths mixed with the like acoustic instruments is such a good combo. Cause it really gives it a futuristic feel while keeping the sort of folksy tribal like vibe that the game is giving off, you know? heard something. I don't know what that was. These ruins are very interesting, though. Like, the story of, like, who the fuck lived here, and why, why are they here? Probably from a, you know, when there was still water here. With it being so high, that'd make a lot of sense. This was, this was probably, like, a lake bed. Tease? Oh, hell, oh. Oz, oh, so I really appreciate that. Um, are you looking for stuff with caffeine or without caffeine? Both, uh, but, with, but for now without. I definitely, you're, you'll probably want to go with a, a nice herbal tea for that. Um, I, Celestial Seasonings has a special place in my heart. That's the brand that you like. You're probably familiar with. Like Sleepy Time Tea is one of their is one of their best sellers. Um, but they uh, were located in Boulder, where I went to college, um, which is very cool to have like them as a local sort of joint. Um, their Tension Tamer Tea is one of my favorites. It's like a mint, um, a mint herbal tea. It's not like just straight peppermint because they do have straight peppermint tea, which is very nice. But the Tension Tamer is a very nice like stress relaxing one and so it has a nice overall vibe to it um while also having like a nice minty mintiness to it that is quite pleasant um i know comment has a recommendation for like a good next time comment streams ask them for tea recommendations as well because they have a few good ones 
Um, but one of the ones that in my area that they recommended to me, Friday Afternoon Tea, um, is a local joint that apparently does a lot of their tea, like, creations based off of, like, their lead, uh, I don't know, tea person, tea crafter, I'm not sure what they're called, um, has, like, synesthesia. Um, so they develop their tea blends based off of, like, I think, like, sounds, feelings, pictures, that sort of thing. I, we're, for a second there, we were about to test the fall damage thing, but since we can glide, I'll, I'll save that for, for a later date. Um, but yeah. Uh, Celestial Seasons, I, I really like. Yes, yes, yep, exactly. Um, but they also have, like, a Bengal Spice one that's pretty good. Sometimes, if it goes, if it, like, if it is out of date, the Bengal Spice will get kind of bitter, but it, with, when it's, when it's, a when it's fresh, it tastes like a chai tea, but it doesn't have any black tea in it, so it doesn't have caffeine, which is really nice, and chai is one of my favorites. Oh, I drink, the Taza chai is the one that I normally drink. Um, I find it's pretty good. Um, I want to learn how to make it myself, because chai is one of those drink, uh, drinks that, uh, like, is best made by your, or is best made, like, homemade. Um... There's a lot of good, like, concentrates and stuff for that, too. And I'm, I'm, personally, like, in the mornings, I drink a lot of Earl Grey tea. Is That's my normal, like, every day. Because uh, it has bergamot in it, which is a citrus. Um, but it's nice. Like, it, it's different. Oh, Cap, thank you. Advice. Look good, sorry. Ask about catching beetles for that awful little saiba. <laughs> uh, oh, we can ask... Do you know where I can find beetles? Do you know where I can find Simon's hiding place? Just straight cut, cut to the chase. Or don't ask. Ah, uh, there's a nest of beetles just east of here. You can't just walk up to one to catch it, though. There's some seeds grow. There's some seeds growing on the rocks around the nest. Drop a seed on the floor and a beetle will start eating it. Then you can sneak up and grab it. Jody greets me warmly. Sick. What was your guild- what was your gilding- gilding like? Gliding like. I asked Je I asked Jenny what her gliding uh, about her gliding. I, is it gliding? I've been saying gilding. I think it's gliding though. These are very cool. I also really enjoy uh, like hibiscus tea is great. Um, it has like a natural sweetness to it. It's a great. It's like an iced tea, um, and it's also non, non caffeinated. Tell you what, I'll tell you when you get back. I cross my arms and protest. Pet all you want. I don't spoil any surprises. She lowers her voice to a whisper. But I did meet some crystal farmers once. Crystal farmers. Green tea. Green tea is also very good. Green tea is one of those ones that is kind of finicky, because um, like if you oversteep it or overdo it, it can be quite bitter. Um, but with like the right preparation, it can be really nice. I like getting it at, like a nice Japanese restaurant. It's really nice. Like that, that. That's 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 one of my favorite ways to do sushi is with a nice, nice hot glass of. Uh, green tea nice green tea that's all i'll say about that we should get going all right we gotta get three beetles apparently oh that's really cool though cap i mean it, it, it's not for everybody for sure oh can i not talk to them don't ask hilal quotes from a selection of obscure and lyrically mediocre ibixi historical ballads whenever i pass by there's a great verse that says much about our folk, buried under sand. Oh, I like the little, little world building stuff. Okay. Beetle detour. Let's go. Oh, fear. Uh, for four fucking months, too. Holy shit, dog. That really means a lot. Also, nice to see you. But, dog, thank you so much. God. Y'all are way too nice to me. Mm-hmm. I know, I definitely, I overbrew my tea most of the time, uh, cause, like, when I'm at work and doing, like, my Earl Grey or whatever, I'll watch TikToks while it's brewing, and I'll get distracted. Um, uh, but Earl Grey is one of the, what, like, or at least the one that they have at work is pretty hard for me to mess up. Which I'm very thankful for. Some teas are more forgiving than others. Um, so Earl Grey is a black tea, um, so it tastes sort of like, if you've had, like, an iced tea or a black tea, um sort of like that and then it has so i think it 
Occasionally, it'll have a little bit of lavender in it, which is which is quite nice. A little bit of a floral flavor. And then it has bergamot in it, and bergamot is a citrus um, that has almost like a greenish taste. It's it's a little it's a lot more subtle. Um, it's used in a lot of like um, colognes and that sort of thing because it has a really like cool scent to it. Um, and so it's not like lemony or limey, but it has this little like light bit of citrus bite to it, which is fun. But it's a nice like standard one. I know like if you're looking for like a other like kind of like standard teas, like an English breakfast or an Irish grey um, tea would, would suit you well. Um, I find though with those like getting the really cheap ones can be kind of like not great. Like with English, I've I've been hard pressed to find a good English breakfast, but that I enjoy. Versus with Earl Grey's, I have been uh, not disappointed very often. Oh, Farah, thank you. But yeah. I saw, were you streaming uh, earlier? You were streaming earlier today, right? How did how'd that go? Orange pico or green? Orange pico is really good. And there's the whole like genre of like oolong teas that I haven't really dipped into as much. And white teas. It's a very cool genre of drink. Also, I like our little Beatles soundtrack here. Mm hmm. Yep. I'm not sure what exactly it means. I'm not a tea expert. You should you should definitely ask comment next time they're streaming. I think they might might be on live on Thursday or Sunday. Um, Earl Grey takes cream really well. That's probably it. Hella is I usually when I take my tea I usually do a good bit of half and half or like cream and sugar because uh, that's how I like my coffee. Um, but if you're looking for no like no cream or sugar, definitely a nice green or a nice hibiscus is is sweet. Herbal teas are also good for that. Um, and then it's weird. It's not one that I'd recommend for just, like, in general. Um, but I really like, like, if you have a sore throat, um, throat croat tea is amazing. Uh, it's used, it uses birch elm bark. Um, and it steeps for, like, 10 to 15 minutes. Um, that shit tastes, I really like it. It's super funky. It's very tree-y tasting in a way that I think is very fun. Throat coat like coat like a jacket um and it genuinely like days that i've i've needed to stream where i've had like a sore throat if i do a bit of that i'm good to go go get the seed let's go seed time oh catch it got two of them got your nose <laughs> Just saw a real TikTok about a guy making birch tree tea. Oh heck yeah! And tea is one of those drinks that you can make yours that you can uh, do foraging as well yourself to like get the ingredients to make it. Um, like just mint by itself as tea is really good, um, and it's very easy to find wild, like either wild or wild or grow your own mint. Um, like the apartment complex that I used to live in had mint just growing next to the pool, and I would. I would really, really frequently um, just grab some of that, like on my way home from school, and use it. I would brew sweet tea, and which uses like a, just like a standard black tea, um, and then with a bit of with a bit of a, a bit of mint in it, really like cranked it up a notch. I find that for like a good for like a iced tea, like if they serve it with like a lemon slice or something, use that, or like if it tastes bad, like a lemon slice will make it bearable. Um, and then for, like, hot teas, or, uh, mint also has a similar thing of, like, enhancing the flavor of a black tea. Of course, yeah. It's... And I'm, I'm not the only, like, tea person in the community either, so definitely, like, ask around, like, comment server, that sort of thing. There's gonna be a lot of folks there that are gonna have some opinions on tea. Oh, we gotta go find another little shithead. Sign up. That's smart, Helen. Um, oh, also, I will note, um, there you are, you little shit. I feel embarrassingly vindicated as I hand Sign with the Beatles. But rather than gloat, she hands me the calibrator and begins to cry. What have I done? You're leaving. You're leaving and you'll never come back. 
comfort her. She blows her nose, then wipes her hand on her tunic. Yara never came back after the last gliding. Aren't you sad? You were her friend. I miss her too. She might visit again someday. People believe that's their choice. I miss her too. That's the empathetic response. I love that. There's been a letter here and there, but it's always to us rather than to me. I'm not bitter, but I hope not to be like that. Please don't go. I tell Simon not to worry that I will be back sooner than she knows. And I'm sure she pout, I'm sure she pouts behind the mask. And I add that if I'm not back sooner than she knows, then she will be ready for her gliding by then, and she can come bother me herself. Promise? I say yes. Good. Then I, then I suppose I can come see you off. I thank her, and I say goodbye for now. And that's all our bike parts. Hell yeah. I know, I want to find some greens that I can really enjoy. That's, that's definitely a genre that I, I keep bouncing off of. Um, I really also enjoyed um, Boulder Tea Company was really good. Um, you can find um, probably like that is probably also like you'll probably be able to find tea spots around you that are local. Um, and that would also be a solid choice. Um, Boulder Tea. Which one? It's a really good one. Um, there is in Boulder, there is this tea house. Um, it's uh, uh, Deshawn Bay. Um, and I double checking, um, but their whole, like the whole spot in Boulder was originally built in a completely different country and then deconstructed and then transported to Boulder. Um, let's see. Yeah, it was built in Tajikistan and then transported to Boulder. And so it's this really cool, ornate, like, tea house just in the middle of the city. Yep, Best Coffee will also be local. Yep, hell yeah. Um. Okay, which one was it? Um, also, they do have... Oh, yeah, Pereira, Pereira tea is great, too. And there's also teas that are built specifically for wellness or health um, that are sort of traditional. Um, oh, Oz, I'll, I'll remind me for the link later, and I'll find it for you. Um, and there's also CBD teas and THC teas. So teas that uh, used either hemp or like pot products in them. Um, and those are quite nice. The CBD ones can be really nice. All right. Love with the parts to see, so let's go. I haven't talked to whoever this is over here. Yep. <laughs> oh, can I talk to him? Umar is a man of few words. He is nothing if not consistent. <laughs> that is good. No worries. I remember specifically, it was a tea company that I had looked up like before I had gone to college. Um, and me and my mom were visiting the school um, as part of like a school visit. Um, and I remember like find like we had like an hour or so before our appointment and i was like oh we should go find something fun to do you know um let's go find like a tea spot you know because she was getting into tea and so i lo looked it up on google found a spot hit directions you know we pull up and we're in like a bunch of warehouses right and we're like oh okay well might be in the wrong spot but we see a sign on the door that's like yep nope this is the this is the tea spot um and we knock on the door and go in and it's like their distribution warehouse and so the receptionist was very nice. It was like, oh yeah, like we don't we don't sell retail out of here. Um, normally, nice to see you. Um, they did actually sell us a few bags of tea, which was very nice of them because it was very much like, oh you you walked up to a spot where we that it's not supposed to be public. But they were still very nice for nice to us. They had a great strawberry strawberry tea that I like to that I like to do for in the summer as a nice tea. I return to Cizo with the parts and, and with the parts, and it's a, as she waves me over that I can feel a pang of sadness in my chest. When will I see her again once I'm gone? Well done, Sable. Yes, this is everything we need. I keep doing that though. I did that with the with the bank one time, navigating to like their corporate headquarters instead of a branch, so I couldn't deposit my check there. Shit like that. Are you ready to assemble a bike of your own? 
I think I'm ready. I think there's a bit of dialogue that we might have missed, but... I'm feeling good about this path. Caesar relaxes at the workshop. It isn't that she's particularly rigid or anxious ordinarily, but there's a certain calm beauty that one truly appreciates when Caesar is in her element. I wonder if it's the, this way for all machinists. Also, yeah, the class of uh, technomancers or whatever in, in fiction, awesome trope. Love it, love it, love it. Dune does it too with the, with the, the spacing guild. Really cool. Technology almost like they are priests. To, to, uh, they are as technology is sacred in this universe they are the priests to it sort of thing you know I think that's really cool uh, what you must understand Sable is that the components you required uh, they fit together not by chance not by effort but by nature they belong to her they have always belonged to her we all we all we, all we are doing is assembling her from what she's already been I nod and I feel a soft buzzing in my ears. Among my clan, we believe that machines have names, held for ages like deep secrets, unheard by those unequipped to listen. We will find this one's name together. Oh, the holiness of this is super cool. All right. Caesar relaxes. Oh. Okay. Very regal, right? How do we... Oh, here are the parts. Thanks. Put down. <laughs> Riding bike wings. Masculinity suits Cizo. It's Cizo, yeah. Right? Sort of almost like Hunter, Destiny Hunter-esque. Trying to think of what aesthetic this game reminds me of, and then getting Lancer vibes. Ooh, yeah. And it's very almost like cell shaded in a way that I think is cool. I'm um, also, yeah, the trope of when technology uh, becomes magic, like when um, Horizon Zero Dawn, like all the technology in that game is effectively magic because no one knows how to use it still. <laughs> Howdy there. Welcome in. Gliding uh. bike booster. Alright, hell yeah. Bear, how are you doing? I hope you're doing a bit better. I hope you're safe. All the weather stuff. Thanks. Gliding bike front. Okay. Oh, I'm so sorry, Bear. All right, let's put this puppy together. Also, fuck uh, Steam for spoiling the name in a achievement. Chips of old, speak to Cizo. Let's go. Listen. Cizo tilts her head for a moment, leaning closer to... Samoon. All at once I know the hoverbike's name, Samoon. I say it in a whisper to let Cizo know. Samoon, Sai Moon. Well done, Sable. Okay, Sai Moon. It, listen, so for games that are released on Steam and released on um, Xbox, and I'm guessing probably for PlayStation 2, are required to have achievements. Like it is, it's not optional, unfortunately. But still. Uh, does she want to go with me? I love that. I love the inanimate object of the naming of it, of the, that, that sacredness of the naming of it, of allowing it to have its own intention, you know? She does, clan child. Hey, Stag! Welcome in! Simoon has a wandering spirit, like you, I think. I tell Simoon that I'm eager to know her better, and Caesar looks quite proudly at the both of us. And again, not just like the personification of the of the craft. Oh, just so cool. Stag, how you doing? Also, uh, since you're since you're in here, fucking shout out to Stag. They are a very fucking uh, cool streamer. 
Uh, fucking streamed all the Bible Man shit uh, like a few months ago, which I love because fucking that was such a huge part of my childhood. Um, so it was very f kind of fun to like deconstruct it and like see see people like talk talk and joke about it like that. Um, but very very good. Like go go check them out. Very very cool. Warhammer 40k also has a group that worships the spirit of machines. Yep, that's right. One of my favorite tropes. Bible Man whips it is one of the horniest. <laughs> yep. <laughs> you are ready then for the for the gliding. May all the gods turn their faces from you, Sable. Turn their faces from you? Hmm. An odd blessing, yeah. Perhaps, but Cizo is prone to such things, and I can read her in her tone that is meant quite sweetly. Um, yes, Bible Man is legit. Bible Man was a, um, like, I think, like, a movie, movie like, short, kind of, sp like, special-ish series um, produced. I'm not sure exactly when it was produced. I watched it in the mid-2000s as a kid, um, sort of. Um, it's worth looking up images, because there was Bible Man. He had a lightsaber that was yellow. Basically a lightsaber. I had that lightsaber as a kid. I had one of the merch props for it. Um... And would fight, there was like a Joker-esque guy that represented, I think, either sin or the devil that he would fight. Um, a different villains representing different sins or like cardinal, like, you know, grievances, that sort of thing. Hey, Norman, thanks for the, thanks for the follow. Welcome in. But not, not a meme, legit. Um, there are now memes of Bible Man, which are quite funny. They will teach you the art of, uh, you must learn to listen to Simoon. To care for her. Seek out my fellow machinist on your travels, Sable. They will teach you the art of machine whispering. Oh, and here, take this. It's a machinist badge. You'll meet plenty of my ilk on your on your gli gliding. Show them your worth, and they'll give you more badges. I thank Caesar twice for good measure, and give a bow. I am ready. Ah, uh, let's do it. Very well. Uh, mostly funded originally by Willie Ames, uh, an '80s heartthrob who turned to God. All the villains look like Buffy season one and two villains. Yep, and they all sing parody pop songs. It's profoundly silly, and I and I <laughs> and I knows it. That's I forgot about this the musical factor of it. Oh my god. Yep. It's that stag. Stag, have you watched Angel Wars yet? Because if you haven't, that would be a great follow up. Um, I remember liking that so much. Let me see if I can find it. That's that was 2004. Um, where's my? I'm I'm very happy we're on this tangent because this is something I love to talk about. You have it. Oh my gosh! I'm, uh, just 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 to show chat. Um, where's my display capture? Um, Angel Wars. I remember it being like so like epically animated, but looking at it now, it's <laughs> very 2004 animation. That's Gabriel or that that's that's Michael. Um, but it follows this series of angels fighting different demons, learning, I'm guessing, life lessons. I thought it was the most badass shit ever. That'd be a very solid follow-up. I remember really, really liking that. Oh, man. Man, I really want to do a stream focus on more, like, spiritual stuff at some point. I have a lot of my vinyl collection is sort of, like, um, queer or reformed worship. Um that I just absolutely adore, but isn't really the vibe for most streams, you know? It is sort of Doom Eternal. It is exactly Doom Eternal, yep. Very 40k. I remember really that sort of armor inspiration, or that armor has stuck in my brain for a while, and it's been the inspiration for a lot of my own, like, character creation and shit. What do we do now? Oh, speak to Jot. okay. Speak to Jotty about the final Gilden gliding ceremony. Let's go. Yeah, Bible Man, Bible Man, and Angel Wars. Holy shit, that takes me back. Yeah, definitely, definitely go give Stag a follow if you haven't already. Total drama island waste. Exactly. Yeah. Like, what's the, what is that? Sable, the cartographer, landed his balloon while you were away. I saw Bible Man at a friend's house and was a, uh, oh, the Left Behind movies. Oh my gosh, I I have not seen those. I think I read like maybe one of the first books. They get sort of. Mm. There's some Christian media that I like. I really profoundly enjoy and like have have a deep appreciation for. And there's a lot of it that is cringe as fuck. 
especially the stuff that like really tries to appeal to like pop culture tends to really stick out as cringe worthy looking back on it and why they got those small waists huh to be gripped by men me too I right. amen to that amen stag fucking yeah amen brother fucking also yeah happy pride month happy happy have small waist to get gripped by men month you gotta love it Sable, that cartographer landed his balloon while you were away. Hey, ah, uh, <laughs> exactly. Ah, oh, man. You should go speak to him. See if you can't get him out. I nod and begin to go, but Johnny gestures me back and puts something in my hand. Here's some money to, here's some money to get going on your journey. Use it mostly wisely. Mostly wisely. Ah, oh, I love that. You gotta leave a little room for the nice, uh, you know, a nice macchiato. But happy Pride Month to Bible Man. Uh, then use a little unwisely when the mood strikes. It's good to know the value of money, but you never want to be ruled by it. What a lovely sentiment. Ah, I thank Jody effusely and head, and head out on my way. All right, let's go. I think, uh, where is the cartographer? Over here? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, there they are. Oh, they did a little whistle to us. Oh, that's cool. I don't know if I'll do any like pride parade stuff this this year. I don't know if anyone else has any like pride like pride plans specifically. Um, work Microsoft is marching in the Seattle parade, um, along with like my studio specifically is is like has a contingent that I'm sure is very fun. Seems overstimulating as hell for me. Um, I am helping out with our company's like pride event though. I worked with one of my friends to, uh, um, who's working on a on a queer, uh, like a it's a drag race, um, fighting game with a bunch of licensed actual like pretty famous, uh, like drag queens. It's very very cool. It's called Drag Her. It was kickstarted a few years ago. You should go check it out. Um, and so yeah, we're getting to. I'm I'm looking forward to checking that out a little bit more. Secret, secret preview. Oh, there we go. The balloon was more fun than, than the person in it. Oh, okay. That's fair enough, Oz. I love this person's mask. The cartographer. I approach the, car the cartographer. Ah, greetings, child. Cartographer Jordan. I saw you looking long longingly at my great balloon. Quite a piece of work, isn't she? She really is. <laughs> longingly? Bigger than I thought. Longingly. I clarify that I was looking curiously, and the balloons aren't exactly my ideal vessel. The newcomer shrugs. That's good, Oz. Hey, Stripey, welcome in. How you doing? Also, Stripey, I hope the amnesia went well. I could, couldn't be me. Couldn't be fucking me. I played fucking Scanner Sombre. That's not even a horror game. It has two jump scares in it. Shit my fucking pants. I hope it went well. Fair enough. I suppose when, when you can e ensconce yourself in a peaceful little bubble and float away down from the sky, the balloon loses some of its charm. Mouse, have a nice one. Thank you so much for hanging out. We're going to the local Pride event this weekend. Uh, went to a drag brunch Sunday and it was a blast. Oh, that's so fun. Hell yeah. That's fair, Oz. Yeah. Uh, super good. Uh, the Dark Descent Machine for Pig. Oh, fuck yeah. Let's go. So yeah, while we're in here, fucking... Shout out for Stripey as well. Also very, another very cool streamer. Um, does like audiobooks professionally. Um, and if you go check out their streams or their VODs, you'll see the reason uh, immediately. It's because they have a fucking amazing voice. I give the balloon an approving nod so that he doesn't feel too bad. Ah, good to meet you. And oh, I should introduce myself. I'm Jordan. Yeah. I tell him I'm Sable. Stripey, but I'm not, I'm not, I'm not lying, because your voice is legitimately, like, incredible. Now, I suppose I've come all this way to see me. It's probably a map you're after, huh, Sable? Stag, thank you so much for swinging by. Yeah, get ready for bed. I know, I don't, I'm not normally around this late, but, uh, it's a special night. Huh? I love a map. Thank you for swinging by, and thanks for the lurk. I tell the cartographer I love a map. Of course you would. That'll be 50 cuts. Hey, we finally learned the name of the currency. Let's go. I'll buy that map. 
Perfect, let's trade then. Ewer map. A map of the Ewer sold by card members of the cartography build. Let's do it. Confirm. People wanted me to go with him. Also asked in a way that was wrong for me. Saying, hey, I'm not forcing you, but it'd be really nice if you went. Oh, that is weird. I feel that, Oz. Oh, hell yeah. Now, I'm really enjoying it so far, and the writing is, oh, amazing. I thank Jordan for the Ewer map and I, all its vast possibilities. Something about this makes it feel more real. Good luck on your gliding, Sable. I will remember, I still remember mine. I ask how it was. Short. I knew since I was a boy that cartography was for me, but I spent a little extra time out there just to enjoy the world. Speaking of, keep an eye on the skies, huh? Plenty of my colleagues out there, and they'll have more maps to sell you, from Hakoa to the Sodic Right Waste. I thank Jordan for the tip and say goodbye. Farewell, child. Oh, fast travel. Let's go. Your hover bike will also fast travel with you nice, very well. And with that... Um, we got our map. Oh, lots of map, huh? Oh, holy shit. Holy shit. Okay, well, it looks like we'll be playing this for a little for a little bit, y'all. They're all... Uh, no. I love the UI is so sharp. All the sharp edges and colors. Okay. Can we zoom? Oh, yeah, there we go. That's very cool. I want to be a carnographer, not carnogrammer too. Aw, I like that the cartographer also is a kid. That's sweet. Oh. And someone's waiting for us. She looks out across the landscape. Zeki's shoulders sag a little. I wonder what she's thinking about. What are you looking at? Zeki's like voice is weakly incredulous. I don't know how she's done it. That's, uh, Elaria over there. I follow her gaze to a little speck in the distance, which I now understand is her daughter, Elaria. Uh, you want me to help get her back? Zeki like sh shakes, her, shakes her head. Yep, yep, exactly, Oz. No, she's fine, and I'll get her. I'm just... She shrugs. Parenting. I suppose I'll know more about that when I'm older. Yeah. I don't think we have an objective now, which I think might be intentional. Oh, no, we're, we're going to talk to our... I return to Jotty with a new lightness. It makes sense the weight of my departure. And it makes the weight of my... Oh, my God. And it makes the weight of my departure feel heavier still. What a strange day. Sable, is that a badge you've got there? Uh, yeah. Cizo gave it to me. I tell Jotty that Cizo gave me the badge. And you must have earned it. Well done. I give a bow of thanks. Well, Sable, if you keep this up, you'll be heading for the mask mask caster in no time. I try not, not to think about going to a mask caster, but it seems impossibly far away. Imagine choosing what I want to be. Ooh, a society where your role in life is decided on the piece of, the like, the primary piece of clothing that you wear on your face. Hmm, very fun. I also wonder if I had to if I had to like shot in the dark guess what the what we're gonna like the theme of this game is is you know fucking no choices forever you know no choices permanent sort of thing imagine choosing what I want to be forever I know what you're thinking but don't worry about it you'll get plenty of badges when you're out there and once once you've got three alike you can trade it for that or you can trade that in for a mask but don't feel the need but don't feel like your first mask is your final choice okay there we're already there the gliding is about freedom exploration. I suggest you claim as many masks as you wish. Only at your final ceremony will you be asked to choose one. Mm-hmm, yeah. Which one should I choose? You'll have to feel it out, but when you know, you'll know. Now. The tone of her now puts butterflies back in my stomach. With all this done, there's only one thing left. It's time then, isn't it? Time to walk through the face door at the Temple of Rohana. There you will assemble your gliding mask and go. 
There are things I wish to convey to Jotty here. Depths of love and gratitude and fear and worry and hope. Oh, right there. I forget what that's called, but using the and, 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 and as a, as a, as a, as a method to really hammer in just how many emotions our character is feeling right now. Magnificent. I, I should go get an English degree. I really shouldn't because I don't want to do school for another four years. But God, I'd love to have words to put to some of the methods that I'm seeing here. And though I find myself unable to speak of it in words, I know she understands. Before you leave, child, I made these for you. They're dyed with a traditional Ibexi maroon, and I hope provide you great comfort out there in the desert. Mm-hmm. Very good question, Zaz. I'm excited to find out. When you leave today, you will no longer be Sable, clan child of the Ibexi. You will simply be Sable, and the rest will come. But no matter what you are, no matter what your journey, where your journey takes you, I will always know you. I will always love you. Oh, oh. And I will see you again. I don't know where my journey will end, but I know where it must begin. And I am ready. The ceremony. I should head to the temple to begin my gilding. And with that, y'all, what a wonderful spot to end for tonight. A great cliffhanger, I will say. So definitely like come back for more later because we'll be playing this. I'm planning. We'll see if y'all liked this. We'll be playing this to completion because I really enjoyed this. Um, geez, this is fun so far and I'm, enjoy I'm enjoying it. Um, it'll probably get in the rotation of some of our... Uh, we'll see. I'll check. It might become a vinyl vinyl game. The soundtrack is very nice and I know some of the sound... Some I need to check which parts of the soundtrack are great. You like it? Okay. Y'all like it? Sweet. Um, it just felt like the ending of a chapter, you know? Um, so the, the whole, the game feels like a, like it reads like a book in a way that I am so enjoying. God, ah, oh, what a, what a solid, what a solid title. Um, but yeah, so that was the stream for tonight. God, okay, what a great game. I'm really looking forward to playing more of this. Um, again, socials. Oh, thank you, Oz. I appreciate that. Um, and yeah, definitely ask comment as well, because they got they got some good recs. But Twitter, Tumblr, and TikTok, or Twitter and Tumblr for the stream updates and uh, schedules. TikTok, YouTube, and Instagram for the shorts. We got a VOD channel if you want the full-length unedited stream. And we got a Telegram if you'd like a ping when I go live. Um, and with that, let's go say hi to someone. There's a lot of folks live. Oh, I know who we're going to go right. Um, we're gonna go raid Cash. They are a very good homie. Super fucking cool. Um, so they have a very cool thing with their with their streams. Is they have a secret word of the stream. And if you say the secret word of the stream, um, you get a reward. So definitely, like, try to guess it. I don't know what it is. I have no clues for you. Um, but it is 100% worth it if you are if you manage to get it. Um, and I will see y'all Thursday. We're gonna be playing some more Verlet Swing. Doing so I don't know what vinyl we'll be playing. Something chill. Something cool. Um, and we'll be hanging. So yeah, thank y'all for being here. This was super fucking fun. I'm gonna listen to the rest of this album while I go to bed, because I fucking love, love, love this one. Sounds good, Oz. And with that, I will see y'all later.